no fairing, no radio, no little compartments to store stuff, no CB, no intercom system. Why would you buy a Road King when you can just buy a Road Glide, an Ultra Classic, or a Street Glide? Cue the intro. So why would you buy a Road King over those other bikes when they're all, they all kind of hang around in the same price range in the in the used market? You can get you can get a Street Glide for the same price you could get this for, depending on what year and, and miles. And I'll tell you exactly why, or at least why I think. And I, I like the Road King the best out of all these. I just got done taking an 800 mile trip from Pennsylvania to Georgia on a Road King, except I didn't even have a windshield because I don't like windshields. And uh, the biggest thing for me, yeah, I, I love having a radio. Radios are great, but I, I wear a full face helmet. And my radio's in my helmet, and I get to play all my stuff off my off my phone. But when you're riding a uh, uh, any of the other bikes, a Street Glide, Road Glide, or Ultra Classic, they all have big fairings right here. So what you're missing out is all this view, all this range of vision that you don't get to see that you're looking over. And if you're riding in the summertime or when it's nice and warm outside. I want as much wind hitting me and my chest and my face as I possibly can because that's what's cooling me down. Now when it comes to riding in the cold, yes, I love having a fairing. I love having a windshield. That's keeping me warm. So even though this bike does have an aftermarket radio on it, which it looks pretty decent, not really my, not really what I would do. So this is a 2014. So this is part of the new Rushmore design. And I'll, you get a lot of changes. It's still the same old bike, but just a lot of, you know, a lot of little minor changes. And the biggest change, in my opinion, is how the bags open up. And it's, I don't know why they didn't do this a long time ago. It's, it's much easier. It clips in instead of the thing that goes like, kind of goes in like that. And this bike is rocking the 103 high output cubic inch motor. It's putting around 100 foot-pounds of torque. And with a six gallon tank, it's getting around 42 miles to the gallon, which you're gonna do a range of probably about 210 miles before you wanna start looking for your next gas station. Now, when it comes to back here, I mean, pretty much the back end is, you know, a, all, the, all the other bikes just without a tour pack or more like, you know, similar to a street glide. So, you know, you have these backrests. Now, these are four post backrests. You can pop these things out. You can also put a fit a tour pack on here if you wanted to. And it's you know very comfortable, very cushy for that back for the back rider. You also have a slot right here that you can you can bolt in a backrest for the driver, which I personally love. I, I've got a backrest on my Road King and I use it all the time. It's the best possible thing. It's probably one of the best modifications I could ever do to a Harley Davidson. Now I probably would not recommend this bike as an entry-level bike. I'm 6'2, I fit great on it. The bike weighs wet and about 811 pounds. You can see I got plenty of space. I feel real spaced out. It's on the heavier side of the motorcycles, but once you've been riding for a while and you've, you're just used to the weight, I don't notice it at all. Let's go on the test drive and show you how awesome this thing runs. All right, guys, before the test drive, let's do the words of wisdom, Colossians 3, 23 and 24. Whatever you do, do your work heartedly as for the Lord rather than for men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance. It is the Lord Christ whom you serve. So I actually just got my, uh, these are the original M1 Moto gloves. That's why they're a little different. They're both prototypes. This is a sample. This one's a sample. I got them like months, months apart. And this is the old sticker design. I was away from them for a little while, about two months, and I was using another pair, and now I got them back. Uh, once you wear these gloves for a little while, they start to fit better. They start to kind of get, uh, they, they just break in, and I, a nice broken pair of gloves is like a badge of pride. I'm going to show you some of the bikes we got for sale right now. That one, that one, Warrior, a couple gold wings, and then that Rune back there. A lot of Hondas. All right, guys. Now I, I'm a big, I'm a big fan of the Road Kings. I think it, I think it's kind of the way to go. I really do. Although I prefer different types of bars. I prefer, I prefer more of like a beach bar. You know, a little wider. Maybe like that wide. It's a little, little narrow for me, but that's all right. And there's something about the simplicity that you get with the Road King that I really appreciate. But also, like I was saying before, imagine taking that off 
but all this you get to look through and if that's not there all the road you get to see and you get to see the headlight of your bike and I just feel I feel a little more connected to the bike and a little more connected to the road and to my environment when I'm riding you know a, a bike like a rookie and there's less stuff there's just less stuff happening you know less stuff to go less stuff to go wrong um, one of the greatest features on the Road King is right there you see that that's the cruise control it's awesome now if you're just cruising around you're not doing any big trips you, you, you're never gonna you're never gonna use it you, you don't need it it's irrelevant but that as soon as you take a longer trip and you want to give that that right hand a break you know throw on cruise control and then you just kind of do your own thing also you can have it on cruise control and still have your hand up here just to kind of rest your hand on there so you're not actually like twisting or or doing anything with the throttle you're just kind of keeping your hand up there just to rest now I know these are bigger bikes and people people think like oh you know these, these bikes don't handle well it's still a motorcycle like that that is how it turns it still turns by leaning over and if you know what you're doing these things do handle well and the only limit and most of the time the only limitation is you of how fast you can you know take a bike like this now when you're scrolling through the uh the buttons on the older harleys the buttons were right here to scroll through this and the newer harleys it makes more sense but it's up here where my finger is right now it says uh range 45 miles so it just comes on when you're about you, you have about a, a gallon left clip that you, you have to go dometer clip it again tripometer and tripometer that's it that's all you need you don't need a big digital display and navigation and stuff like that if you know a big trip you get a phone mount you mount your mount your phone right there answer all your phone calls and then every time you get a new phone bam you got a brand new GPS you get a brand new comm system you get a brand new everything the 103 is a really really good reliable durable motor uh, I've not heard any large complaints about them you know just I like I have not heard anything consistent you know what I mean like oh like you know like the old like twin cams where they're still good motors but they had like one major flaw that had to be fixed around 30,000 miles uh, nothing like that with the uh, with the 103 and I've seen a multiple 103s with well over you know 100k on them still running well without being rebuilt now this thing's nice you regulate a little bit of air coming in not as nice as just taking that windshield and just throwing it in the neighbor's yard and I'm saying that because it's hot and I like the air hitting me once it once it starts getting a little cooler outside you might be a little happy you might be happy you get a windshield and know a lot of you guys love windshields I'm just fine without it now who is this bike really made for this is not it's not an entry-level bike it's just big it's big you need to acquire balance before you ride something like this no it's not that it's um it's overly powerful or anything like that it moves it's quick but that that's not the point now harleys do harleys do continue to get faster and faster but harley's goal is not to make the most powerful you know fastest motorcycle if, if that was their goal they'd be failing and but harley's doing pretty pretty well because that's not their goal their goal for Harley Davidson is to make good long long lasting good looking kind of classic design American cruiser bikes it's it's a dream of most a lot of people not just Americans to to get a Harley Davidson and go on a big trip and if you ever get the chance to do it and it's fun and um will will your bike break down i don't know it could anything breaks down everything breaks down you know a lot of people bash harleys and they're like wow they're super super crazy expensive to maintain 
everything breaks down. If, if you start looking, if you start diving in and, you know, use, using an, anecdotal evidence, um, the 1800 Goldwing from like 2002 to like, I don't know, what, 2012 or something like that, like that body style Goldwing, if the alternator went out, and this happened, if the alternator went out, you were spending at least $1,100 to fix the alternator because you had to take the whole motor out to get to it. But Hondas have a great, re they have a great reputation for being reliable bikes. Of course they do, they, they, because they are. When you buy an expensive bike, yeah, there's gonna have, they're gonna have a few things like, okay, it's expensive to fix. It's, it's rare you find a situation where the best bike is the cheapest bike and is the most reliable bike and is the bike that everyone wants. So now, now a lot of people are like, oh, you're just a big Harley fanboy. I was, I was never a Harley fanboy. I never liked Harley Davidson. I was like a lot of you people who were like, they're expensive and they leak and they, and they do this and they do that. And I, I just had nothing but bad things to say about them until I started riding them. And then it started real slow, but it was like, I get it. First it was like, I get it. Now I get it. I understand why people like Harley Davidson's. And then it was like, I really like Harley Davidson's. Now, do I think a Harley, a Harley only or a Harley or die? No, of course not. I think there's tons of other bikes. I do like this bike. I just, I like the Road King. If I were going to own this bike, the two modifications I would do, I'd probably take these speakers off because I'm not a big fan. I, I wear, I have speakers in my helmet. Um, I would change these bars out. Not to go like apes or anything. I just want a little bit wider. I like more of the beach bars, honestly. I like to keep my Harley, my Road King bars low. Something more like this. That would feel really nice. Which you can do with all the, the stock wires and stuff. Oh, side note. Um, these bikes are all throttled by wire now. All the touring Harleys, which is cool. You don't have any cables coming down there. I would not change the pipes, but the other big giant thing that I would do that would really just make this bike is I would put a, uh, I'd, I'd put a backrest in it. I know I'm, I'm only 33 years old. I'm gonna be cruising on a bike like this. I want a backrest. I wanna, I wanna lean in. That takes a lot of, a lot of pressure off your arms to support yourself, and off your, um, off your body to try to keep that like you know good posture so your back doesn't start hurting. Guys, I like Road Kings. I've always had. No, I like, I like all bikes, but um, I pers I personally have one. I, ha I have a Road King myself. Um, I've got a 99. All right, guys, that wraps it up. Remember, it's not what you're riding, but where you're going. And if you guys are ever looking at, um, if you guys are looking at buying a bike and you don't know which bike you actually want, instead of buying, instead of just going out and buying a bike and then not liking it and buying another one, why don't you try renting one? Rider share, and you can actually go online, see, see local bikes near you that you can rent. You know, for not that much for per day. Rent them, see if you like them. And if you do, buy one. All right, guys, that wraps it up. We'll see you guys later.